Welcome to the Algebra Teacher Powers to Be I. Uh, in this video for the week, I wanted to show you uh, a solution to a problem that you might have come across with some of your dimension tables and fact tables in the Power BI program. Have you ever had a fact table that had multiple columns for date, and then you had your dimension table as well? Well, when we think about when we make relationships between tables, the date column will talk to another date column from your dim date to your fact table, right? But what if when we make our measurements, we don't always want to see it based on that relationship? Maybe we want to see the measurement based on one of our other date columns. Well, one of the workarounds we could do is we could make separate dimensional date tables and have each one talk to a unique date column from the fact table. So we could say, for example, our first dimensional date table talks to the, the order date uh, in our fact table. We could have our second one talk to the ship date in our fact table. The third one talk to the due date. And oh my gosh, too many date tables, right? So just using a little simple DAX coding, we're going to be able to fix that problem and make it much easier for any end user that you hand off this report to uh, to understand very quickly of what measurement they need to use and not which tables do they need to use. So let's take out how we can uh, check out how we can actually solve this problem here. So in <clears throat> On the Power BI desktop, I'm about to pull up the data that we're going to be taking a look at today. So what I have here uh, is just some, some basic, I just came up with some data on the fly uh, for the different states, some sales amounts, and then an order date of when the sale was taken, and a ship date. And again, based on different companies, some people might collect the money on the order date, or maybe after the shipment has processed. Or maybe the different departments need to know what their values are at any given time. So in order to do this, one thing we're definitely going to need is a date table. Well, what I've done here, I haven't done anything really. Uh, let me show you this code that is going to make the date table. If you ever have been handed off a report uh, and you needed a date table but there wasn't one there, this is a really great code to just simply, you go to new source, and I'll just show where you would go to, but you go to new source, uh, blank query, and then you would paste in all this code. Now, I did not do this whatsoever. I, uh, I hijacked this from uh, Devin Knight's uh, blog out there, so I'll put that link in the actual uh, comments underneath the, the video here. But you just simply copy it from his blog, read about it, paste it in so you know how it's kind of working here, and then once you paste it in, you will get these little parameters here to start with. So you would put in your start date, which I'll go with January 1st of 2020. And then you also put in your end date, so I'll go December 31st of 2020. And just by doing that, we now have a fully operational date table, other than the fact that I do need to come and change the data types for each of these. So date is date, and then our year, I'm gonna change that into a whole number. Quarter, I'm gonna to turn to text. Week number, I will also do a whole number. Month number, also a whole number. Month itself, which will be text. And then finally, there's one more, the day of the week, and that is also going to be text. So now I'm going to rename invoked function. Let's name this to our dimensional date table. So I'm going to go with dim date here. And so we just simply need to close and apply this. Now, when you close and apply, the first thing you should always do in the Power BI desktop is see if Power BI figured out the relationship that you wanted. So we're going to go over here to our modeling view to take a look at our relationship. And it didn't. And one of the reasons why it doesn't do this is Power BI is confused. Uh, it knows that there are some matching columns here that they could use as a key column, but it's not sure if we want to make the date relationship to the order date, which means all of our measures when date is brought in will be based off order date columns, or if we want to do it off of the ship date. So what I'm going to do is go from date to order date. So again, uh, the date table will filter all of our sales down based on a date, but it's going to be based off of the actual order date. So let's go see this in action. Let's go actually build uh, a report here. So I'm going to, uh, I've got a table down over here. So let me drag this up. And I'm going to put in, uh, well, first off, you know what I need to do? I need to make a measurement because uh, I'm going to want to see the, the sales amount, uh, but I don't want the call. I actually want to do a measurement uh, in terms of DAX, so that way I have a little bit more freedom to, to use it later on in the report if I ever needed to, uh, in terms of other calculations to, to add it into. So I'm going to just go to the sales table, and I'm going to click on new measure. And this is going to be my total sales. So I'm just going to call this total sales 
is equal to, and let me make this a little bit larger, there we go. If you didn't know how to do that trick, you just hold down the control key and scroll up down on your mouse and that makes your formula uh, text larger. So I'm gonna go the total sales is equal to the sum and then I just have to give it the column name. So it comes from our sales table and it is going to be the sales amount. So I'm just gonna tab that over for it to pick up real quickly and we've got our total sales. So now if I bring total sales into the actual table, we should see a number here. And let's make that bigger real quick. So I'm just gonna go over to formatting, I'm gonna search for text size to get there quickly, and I'll change the text size to let's go with 30. 30 looks good. So that is our total sales. Now if we want that to be filtered down or sliced down by the state, I simply just bring in state to that same visual. And now that number is gonna be brought down by the state and I'm going to rearrange those. I want the states to show up on the left. So let me bring total sales underneath. There we go. So state, total sales, perfect. But now what if we want to know based on the date of the sale? Well, I would come over here and I would bring in, and, I, and, and so again, I could bring in order date, but if we think about that based on my fact table, that's only going to give me the actual the date itself, so January 3rd or March 17th or whatever. But if I wanna see it on the month level, which was not in my original uh, table, that's why that dim date table is gonna be helpful because it can group things based on month levels and not the individual uh, unique date. And that's why we had to have relationships between these two tables so they could talk to one another uh, and do the heavy lifting, so to speak. So let's take a look at what happens when we bring in the actual month. So I'm just gonna bring month in right here. And again, it put it, so let me put the, uh, I'll go state, month, and then total sales. And so far, so good. But the issue is, these are the sales that are actually based on the order date. What if the shipping company or the shipping department needed to know how much of the sales have they actually shipped out? Maybe that's an important metric for them. Or you can think of whatever this might come across in, in your line of work. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna, first off, I'm just gonna copy and paste this table real quick. So Control C, Control V, and it will copy and, well, let's see, maybe it won't, Control C and Control V. There it goes, now it copied it. All right, so now I've got two tables. Now, this one on the left, both of them right now currently tell me the sales based on the actual order date. But what if I wanted to do it based on the shipping date? Well, there's two things that we need to do. First thing is we need to make a new relationship, not a new date table, just a new relationship. So I'm gonna drag the date over to the actual ship date. So date to ship date. Now notice here what we have, this is an inactive relationship. It's got these little uh, dots there instead of that, that whole solid bar. So if I even do a double click on it, um, we'll see that it currently does not say we have the option to make this relationship active if we want to. Uh, I do not want to make the relationship active. This is the inactive one. This is the one that I'll use whenever I, I want to call on it, so to speak. So I'm going to click on cancel for right now. So again, I want everything to always be based on order date, but anytime I do want this shipping date one, I can call on it for Power BI to run that relationship. And here's how we're going to do that. It's going to take two, two pieces of code in our DAX formula. So I'm gonna make a new measurement. So we have the total sales, but now I'm gonna make a new measurement. And this one, I'm gonna be more explicit. I'm gonna say total sales by the ship date. So if you're familiar with DAX and some of the, the formulas, one of the most important formulas in DAX, at least I think, is the calculate function. Uh, and what the calculate function uh, operation does is it will override any filters that are currently within your actual visual or coming from the outside visuals of cross filtering as well. So calculate, you can override, manipulate, change what you want in terms of the filter context. And that's what we want to do. We don't want to use the regular filter based on the actual order date. Instead, I want to use that ship date. So in order to do that, I have to use the calculate function, which then allows me to say, here's the filter I want you to use. So let's check that out. So I'm gonna go total sales of ship date. So I'm gonna say, let's calculate. And look, it says evaluates an expression context modified by filters. That's what we're gonna, uh, we're gonna feed to it. So the expression. So the expression is, what am I measuring? Okay, I'm measuring the total sales. 
All right, and this is another reason why I had to make the measurement and not just report the column amount for this one. So I'm gonna go total sales. And now it says the next thing you need to feed to me to do a calculate is you need to feed me a filter. So I'm gonna hit comma, and now we're gonna to go to the filter. And the filter here is actually gonna be another DAX function. It's called use relationship. And what use relationship does is it specifies an existing relationship, da da da, defined by naming two columns that serve as endpoints. So what this is really saying is, give me the two columns you want in the relationship, the two columns that match up with one another. And for our scenario, it's the date and it is the ship date. Those are the two columns that I want talking for this operation. So I'm gonna go with, and let's say it just took it off there. So we're gonna go use relationship. So I want it to go from our date column from the dimensional table. But this time, I now want us in the sales table not to use the order date, I wanna do the ship date. That is the relationship I need. Now this only works if we made that relationship in the modeling view. If I didn't go and make that secondary relationship, this would not work here. So let's click, uh, we'll hit enter here. And now, when I come over to my second table, let me put this back up and let me bring these guys down. All right. So now in the second table, I'm going to get rid of that total sales, the original, and I'm going to replace it with the total sales by ship date. And we should see, let me move these over, the big reveal. I'll get rid of that filter pane there. And it's a little bit too large. Let's come on over just a little bit more. We should see some different numbers. Yes, we see different numbers. So for Florida, February 1925, Florida, February 1925, nothing new. However, look here. Florida, March is 306. But in terms of shipping, it's only $293. So what happened is we took in the orders. We just didn't fulfill them yet. So just by using that use relationship and making that secondary and active relationship, we were now able to use a measurement that didn't report on the primary relationship, we reported it on the secondary relationship. So I hope you can find some use case scenario for this in whatever Power BI reports you're working on. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any comments, uh, please leave below. Also, please subscribe. Have a wonderful day.